Hello friends and today I am talking about test driven development. It's a TDD. So TDD is a five step process. The first step is think, the second step is red bar, the third step is green bar, the fourth step, step is called refactor, sometimes also called clean and the fifth step is repeat this. Now while we are thinking, we are thinking of a behavior which we expect from a software. So we are thinking about a behavior in a think step. In other words, we are thinking of a test which will force us to write the production code. So we are thinking of a test first. That in the red bar step, we write the test and we run the entire suit we run the whole suit, the test suit, and see this newly added test failing. And this fail is usually represented in a red bar in most of the TDD frameworks. And that is why the second step is called red bar. So at this stage, we have a failing test. So once we have a failing stage, say test, at the third stage, we write the code. It's just enough code to make the failing test pass. So the third step is writing the real code. And once we have the passing test, like we write the code, we run the suit again and we get the green bar for the newly added tests because now tests are passing. Once we are done with that, we review the code and reorganize it, refactor it to make it better and this we do in a frequent cycles with practice we need to repeat this step and with practice we should be able to do 20 cycles in an hour so the key of TDD is thinking in a small increments we are writing 5-6 lines of test we are writing 5-6 lines of code and we are doing refactoring, we are doing refactoring of that 5-6 lines of code and we are running this cycle 20 times in an hour. We are repeating it. Now, that if you look at these steps, we are thinking of intent of the software or we are communicating the intent of a behavior twice. It's like a double entry bookkeeping. We are thinking of intent or we are communicating intent via writing a test and we are again communicating the intent when we write the real code. So if we perform, if we follow the test driven development, we communicate our intent twice and it's very unlikely that we do mistake, we do the same mistake in both the communications. Theoretically, you may think that we may do the same mistake while writing the test and the same while writing the code. But in practice, it's a very rare event. And that makes, that increases the code quality significantly when we follow test-driven development. The another advantage of test-driven development is we control the scope creep. How? Say, while you are doing coding, you may get into deep into coding and you start adding few features, few configurations which are not needed now. When you are following test driven development, you are coding or you are just passing the test. You are coding, you are writing the just enough code which can pass the test. So your focus is always binded or always controlled by the expected behavior of the software which helps us in controlling the scope creep. Since we write the test first, and in order to write the test first, we need to have a public interfaces. Then only we can write these tests. So following the test driven development helps us in achieving loose coupling. So we achieve a loose coupling and high cohesion via following test driven development. Thanks for watching our video on test driven development.